Good morning, everyone. I am here to do my chapter four, five, and six synopsis. Um, I'm going to start with chapter four. Chapter four was entitled Connecting Through Verbal Communications. And for the most part, it discussed language and how we use language. Um, it talked about language being the way that we share and understand ideas with different people. Um, basically, language is kind of telling or the explaining of how we feel and the way we think. Um, I know one synopsis was saying that how how could you go a whole day or a whole lifetime with telling someone how you feel? And the only way to do that would be to explain or be able to use language as it should be used. Um, depending on cultures, you know, we do have different languages. However, the main thing that I understood from it was making sure that you understand. Um, a lot of times when people speak different languages, it's because of the meanings of the words. And that was a key thing in um, language, I mean, chapter four. It kept talking about words and how words have no meaning until we, we, the people, or you give it meaning. And a lot of times in different cultures, words are different because cultures are different. That's why we really don't understand. It's not the words that have the meaning, but it's the actual culture of the person who's talking that puts the meanings to the words. Um, a lot of times we got to realize that we should intentionally use words for meanings. Um, to give clarity and try to be specific when we are talking and using whatever language it is that we need to convey our message. Um, one key aspect I think they talked about was the pendulum effect and how with the pendulum, how it goes back and forth. It's a great visual to see how people use language and how language helps communicate, show communication. Um, I think it said when the pendulum, the both of the pendulums are directly in front of each other, um, it shows that language or communication is 100%. Um, both people understand, both people were effective in sending their message. However, when they swing far apart, you realize that the language there's a big miscommunication, and the further away it is, the further the message and the sender and receiver have really no communication. Um, again, you try to avoid, in language, we, we are supposed to try to avoid putting our opinions in or being biased we should try to look at a full situation and based on the facts, get the meaning and understanding of the facts, the things that are evident, not the things that we know or what we think we know or from our experience. Because a lot of time our language comes from our experience or what we know. Technology is a key thing that kind of disintegrates our language. Because a lot of times, you know, we text or email and through those, it changes the language that we should be using and communication gets broken down. So it changes our actual social ability. I'm going to move now on to chapter five, connecting through nonverbal communications. Um, this is kind of like the opposite of chapter four because by it being nonverbal communication, it's just like now I'm kind of talking with my hands a little bit. But um, it talked about nonverbal communications being a form or a way of communicating through body movements, facial expressions, um, eye movements, gestures, and more. Um, nonverbal communication can completely change a verbal communication, whereas I could possibly say one thing, but my facial expression or my body movement would give you a whole nother understanding or a whole nother thought process to what I've said, which would, like I said, change my actual 
verbal message to you. Nonverbal cues are connected to our emotions. That's the main thing. A lot of times when we have body movements, gestures, or eye motions, it's usually a reaction to a stimuli, whether it being what someone has said or what someone has done. So normally, um, we really, from what I read, we cannot control, or for the most part, we cannot control our nonverbal um, gestures because it is a reaction to something or, that was said or something that was done. Um, a lot of times, going back to technology, people use technology and they send messages, but you can't clearly understand the message because there was some type of nonverbal cue in that where the person may have been sarcastic is what it kept saying. And in person, you can see the sarcasm by maybe a facial expression or eye wink or something, but through a text, you cannot see that. So technology and nonverbal communication don't really work hand in hand. Um, when communicating nonverbal, it is best to try to remember the purpose and the function. And that is, it was five functions. Complimenting, repeating, regulating, substituting, and deceiving. All those are functions or why people sometimes use nonverbal communications. Moving on to chapter six. Chapter six was listening and thinking, something that I know I have to work on more. Um, a lot of times people think that hearing is listening, but that is not the case. Um, I've read here and plenty of times hearing is just able to detect you heard a sound. You haven't really fully understood what it is that you've heard. You haven't went through the process of listening to fully understand um, the listening and thinking skills. A lot of times people misunderstand, like I said, because of the poor listening habits. You know, you don't go through the process of trying to figure out um, what did you hear did you think about what was said? Did you evaluate the situation or what the speaker said? Did you let any barriers come into play, such as, you know, what the person had on, what they might have accidentally, mistakenly said? Were you just not interested in the message at all that you could not listen? A lot of those barriers have an effect on your thinking and listening skills. I mean, listening is how we gain knowledge of a situation. You have to be able to sit and purposely and focus and attentively listen to what someone is saying, you know, giving feedback, making sure you clearly understand, asking questions if need be. All that was discussed in Chapter 6. Um, for the main part, like I said, it basically told you to go through the process Make sure you go through the process of listening and thinking. Just don't assume or cut people off how we how we do kind of in the mind where someone's talking and you've heard for the most part what you wanted to hear, so you cut it off. You need to go through the full process of thinking and listening. And to sum all of this up so far, the main idea of what I got is that we constantly need to be changing the way we think, the way we listen, modify it to the best of our abilities in order to effectively communicate. Thank you.